Hello, and welcome to Virtually Maker Fair. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I'm your presenter for OBS for Dummies, like me. Um, I am a STEM educator out of New Jersey. I work for the Warren County Library System as their Makerspace Coordinator. I also run my own business, Kaleidoscope Enrichment, where I offer um, additional STEM programming and maker programs for homeschools and libraries and schools and things like that all over the area. Um, I'm also the author of the Big Book of Maker Camp projects. So I am used to doing hands-on projects with people pretty much 24-7. Um, out of classrooms, out of libraries, out of farmers markets and, you know, regional pools. But with the pandemic, obviously, that's not an option right now. So I ended up having to move all of my educational content online. And I suspect you're in the same boat right now. Probably, much like myself, you may not have had all the fancy equipment that you needed at home. Mostly, I had a laptop. I was able to get my DSLR, my good camera that I use for shooting the book and for my blog, hooked up to my computer. I didn't even have a webcam. I had to use an old video camera as a document camera, whatever made it work. But I soon ran into the problem that as I'm trying to switch views, like I want to show something on a website so I can explain a concept. I want to share uh, maybe a Google Slides or a PowerPoint presentation. I want to switch from camera to camera easily. That became kind of a challenge because there aren't necessarily a lot of easy ways to do that. Now, I've seen some creative solutions out there, but mine was to use a piece of software called Open Broadcast Software, OBS. It is free, which is very good. I like free and pretty simple to set up and use. In fact, I've only been using it for about a month and I think my videos have gone from, and my live streams have gone from kind of sad creation on a cell phone to something that I'm actually pretty proud of. And so I want to share that with you today because you too can use this to much more easily control your devices and um, provide content to your students, either recorded or live streamed or interactive. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is actually download the software. So you're gonna go to obsproject.com and you should find a screen like this. Um, depending on what kind of uh, machine you're using, you're going to download the appropriate version for you. Um, this is also a good place to bookmark right now because the blog and the forum are probably places that you're going to want to come back to and check out for um, details as you learn and grow with the software. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do. Okay, so here we are in the software. It's a completely clean slate. Um, so you have your usual menus, your file. Okay, so you know, you can, <laughs> this is very helpful. Make sure it's always on top when you're working live stream, unless you're using uh, like Chrome or something like that and you need to go out to other apps. Um, this can help from things getting lost. Um, <laughs> the settings, this is probably gonna be the most important one that you're gonna use the most. We'll go over that in a little bit. Um, all of your editing to copy scenes and sources and things like that. Transform is very helpful because sometimes your camera may, be, may need to be mirrored or whatever. So um, that's kind of the part I tend to use the most. Um, view, this is where you're gonna find all of your, uh, your docs, your toolbars, things like that. Pretty standard. Um, and then your scene collection, which we're going to talk about in a minute, because what we do in OBS is you can set up different scenes. So I have a scene that is my document camera. I have a scene that is my regular DSLR um, camera. I have a scene that maybe is a website I like to use or a scene that is just generally using Chrome or whatever. So by setting up all those things as their own individual scenes, you can bounce from one to the next very easily and professionally and even use a keystroke to do it so that um, it makes it very easy when you're going from camera to camera or from application to application. Uh, remember, this was actually created for gamers so that they could do um, video of themselves inside the game or switch from, you know, between gaming windows, especially if they were playing with friends. So we can use it uh, in a very similar way to create educational content. And then your tools, we're not really going to need those so much right now. Um, there are all kinds of extended things you can do, but we're keeping it very simple for today. Um, down here, this is kind of where the real action happens. This big 
black screen here, that's what is uh, being live streamed or recorded. So whatever is in this window and the way that it looks in this window is what's going out to your viewers. Um, over here under controls, you can see that this is the start uh, streaming key. You can set up a hot key for that too. So it's a push of a button if you want and recording. You can stream and record at the same time. And I do recommend you, you do so if you have the space on your computer because sometimes streaming doesn't work out quite right or you lose internet connection or whatever. So being able to record and have that backup can be really helpful. Um, studio mode, we're not really going to use right now. We're sticking with classic mode and keeping it simple. And again, easy way to get the settings and to exit the software. Scene transitions, I pretty much set and forget. I leave it at a fade, 500 milliseconds, so that when I go from my document camera to my main camera, for example, it looks nice. It transitions nicely. It's not a jarring change. Your audio mixer will show you where all of your um, inputs are, so your microphone it might be in here. You can play clips of music if you like, um, and all that's going to be there. Sources, these are your audio and visual inputs. Um, and you're going to need to set up all the sources that you want to use. And then your scenes. So I'm going to go ahead and set up what I'm going to call my master scene. Okay. And that's going to have everything that I might want to use in it. Now, if I want to get rid of this old scene, I can just hit the uh, minus and it will go away. If I want to make a new scene, plus sign and um, call it whatever you want. So we're going to go to a master scene and using the same deal, I'm going to do a click and I'm going to add some video. So video capture devices right here. And that's going to be all your different cameras. Now you can name it and you know, really you should. So I'm naming mine Logitech because I'm using my Logitech webcam that was uh, on loan from a friend. So here we go. Oh, I don't like the integrated camera on my computer, which is why I borrowed a webcam. <laughs> and there you go. Now you can of course adjust all kinds of things, especially uh, the resolution in your, um, your camera here. And that's really up to you. A lot of times I'll just kind of leave it as is. I'm not going to get too fussy, but just to show you what you can do, hit okay. And there we go. Here I am. Look, hi, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> now, um, I'm recording using a different piece of software, but if I needed audio, come back in here, audio input. You'll notice there's also an audio output capture. So if like your computer is playing, um, you know, sound, you might want to use that to actually capture that. Um, cause it's only, it's only going to hear and, uh, stream or record what you tell it to. So I'm just going to, you know, what is this one? I don't even know. It's a microphone. Okay. I'm going to look, pick whichever mic I want. I know I have a ton of different things on here. I've been experimenting. <laughs> And once I do that, now you can see that I've got these little bars. So you want to stay in the green zone. My microphone is pretty close to my mouth, as you can see. So I'm going to just bring that volume down until I'm staying mostly in the green zone there. <laughs> um, and you can mute this at any time. So if I don't want to have my voice playing, say I'm playing music or I'm playing a video or something like that, you just hit mute and it's gone. You can also um, hide or unhide. You, there are filters that you can apply if you want to. Again, I'm keeping it really simple. Okay. So here I am, but maybe we don't need to just be looking at me right now. <laughs> maybe I want my document camera. So again, I'm going to go ahead and add another video capture device. I'm going to say doc And I'm going to find my document camera, which is just an old video camera that I set up. And there we are. So now if I wanted to, I can make that much bigger. But look, oh no, that's not good. It's all reversed. Remember that transform. Where is my transform? Edit. So I can flip this horizontal. And again, under edit, transform, flip it vertical. And now it's oriented correctly. Okay. And there are other things that you can do in there if you need to rotate it or whatever. But now my document camera is showing up. Hello. I can do things on my document camera. Isn't that great? Ta -da, ta -da. But I'm gone. So what do I do about that? 
if I want to be on top, if you want to be able to see me, I need to pull that camera all the way up to the top. So there I am. I'm going to pull my audio back down. So now I'm on top. If I want to see me and my document camera, all I have to do is resize myself. So now you can see me, you can see my document camera, okay? And in theory, you would be able to have both of those things going at the same time. So you can have facial interaction with the kids um, while you're also working on something under your document camera. So that's really helpful. Um, another common one that I use is browser. So this lets you basically create, you directly go to one URL. So if you have like an online textbook or you want to always be able to access your um, Google Classroom, it's, I like to set it up this way so that it's nice and easy to find. Um, and I might have named that, you know, like Google Classroom if that's what I'm doing. And again, I just resize it until it's the way I like. I'm going to go ahead and move myself up on top again. Whoop. And there I am. Okay. My head is really cut off. <laughs> I wonder if I can fix it. My, my webcam is not staying on too well. Eh, oh well. Um, so that's a really good one for websites that you're going to use over and over and over again. It can also be really good if you're sharing a like specific Google document or a specific slide. You can input that um, exact URL there so it's easy to find. You can also use this as kind of like if you're doing... Um, if you just need the kids to quiet down, you might just have a picture that says like, quiet please, or something like that. Um, you can also do that with images. So for example, maybe I have a um, specific schematic I wanna share or something like that. Uh, and let's see, do I have a good example here under my pictures? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh yeah, here's, this is one I did from Germany on um, Germination the other day. So I can have images set up or a slideshow of images set up and ready to go so that I can share them with my with my students or my participants. Now I'm getting pretty crowded here. I've got a million things, right? Very easy. Just hit that little eye and it hides and you can bring it back up anytime you want. Last one that's really useful, window capture. So for example, maybe I want to share what's on my uh Web browser, boom, there you go, that's shared. I can hide that for now. Or maybe I wanna share from a specific app that I use a lot. For example, just scroll on down. It's gonna have whatever's open on your computer. Here we go, Morphe. Okay, maybe I'm gonna teach some 3D uh, design, some CAD, and there you go. So that's ready to go. And then all I have to do, if I want to do something in Morphe, let's see if I can show you. Okay, I'm going to come here and I'm going to make Morphe a little smaller. And you see how it automatically resized in OBS? And remember, that's what your viewers are seeing. So anything I do here in Morphe is showing up there in OBS. Okay, going back. So that's a really useful way to share all kinds of different content. You can also, um, you know, not just use images, but you can, um, my camera keeps sliding. So sad. This is why I usually use my other camera. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's terrible. All right. So that's my master of all the different things I might want to use, but trying to keep all of these track of all these things can be really challenging. So that's where scenes come in. Okay. So say I know that I'm often going to be using a specific um, website. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on that and copy, come into scene one and paste it. And then maybe I always want to have my own face there. So I'm interacting with the kids. So I'm going to come to Logitech. I'm going to copy, right? And I just did control C and paste. And there, now I've created that scene. Now maybe I want something that's just my, you know, scene. I'm just going to call it scene two. That's just my document camera. I come back up into master scene. I get my doc, control C, control V. Now, you notice I did not include audio. Since I'm just using the same microphone, I'm just going to paste that right into each one. So now I can very easily go from scene one to scene two, and it fades nicely 
back and forth like that. Okay. So that's the basics of how you set up your broadcast so that you can have all kinds of different scenes. So just to give you an idea, and what's nice here is, so I have, when I do stuff for Kaleidoscope for my business, here's my Kaleidoscope stuff. I have a nice little graphic. You can see that there's intro music playing, so you can import media. That way you just import a media source. So you can do video, you can do audio, whatever you like. You notice you cannot hear this because I don't have the monitor on. If I did, you'd be hearing that over me. You'd be hearing my voice coming back through the software. So I usually keep the monitor off. If you want to double check that it's there, you're just going to come up to where? <laughs> right. Everything's under edit. Advanced audio uh, properties and see how it says uh, monitor off. You just put monitor only. So now you can hear what, what would be streamed out or what's being recorded at all times. I'm going to turn that back off, but you can see you can check it if you, if you want to check to make sure it's working. Also notice that now I have multiple audios and if I don't want like dings from my computer because like I got a notification, I'm going to mute my desktop. And maybe this is playing while I'm getting myself together before I actually start my stream, I'm going to mute myself. I've set up keystrokes, and let me show you where that is, because we're going to talk um, settings in a moment. But you can set up keystrokes so that you can just touch a key on your keyboard, and it'll bring you from one to the next. So my camera view is offline at the moment, because I'm using my webcam, and this is set up to use a different camera. My document cam, you already saw. <laughs> um, a screen capture, so this is set up to go straight to um, my web browser. Um, I always have my website open in case I need to refer to it. And then I've got a little piece of music again and another graphic for when I'm leaving. I really mostly like to have the intro because it gives me a second when I'm doing a live stream to like get myself organized. Okay, so great. You've got this all set up and you know, maybe for different classes, you have different scenes because you might need different things. For me, I do stuff for the library, I do stuff for Family Maker Camp, I do stuff for myself. And so I have all of those set up differently so it's, it's easy for me. I'm ready to go in like five minutes. Everything's already preset. Now, how do I get any of this out into the world? Okay. Here we go. I'm coming back so I can actually see you. Okay. So what if I want to actually send this off into the world? Here's what we're going to do. Actually, I want... <laughs> So there's my Logitech, there's my browser. We don't want doc, we want... Okay, so if you want to live stream, we need to go into our settings. Here we are. General, pretty basic stuff, um, mostly preferences. Output is gonna be about what you're actually sending out. You can um, adjust, you know, your audio tracks, how you're recording, how you're streaming, all kinds of things like that. Mostly at first, you're really not going to need any of this. This is just if you're starting to um, like use products like Restream where you're streaming to multiple places at once. Audio, again, this is where you can set up specific things for each of your audio devices. Um, you, again, I set up most of it in sources and I, I just kind of leave it. Video, same type of thing, though you can adjust like what your resolution is and what the output resolution is. And sometimes it's important to make sure that those are kind of similar because um, you're going to get a lot of downsampling otherwise. Hotkeys, I mentioned these before. So you can set like say every time that you want to start streaming, you can just set that as S. And when you click that, it will automatically switch. I use these mostly for my different scenes. Um, to make it easy to go from one thing to the next. But you can play with hotkeys. Now, the only thing to remember with hotkeys is that um, if you use that key while you're just typing the name of something, it's going to switch. It's going to do that thing. So be careful. Um, use keys that you may not necessarily be typing on all the time. And advanced, at least when you're beginning, you're really not going to need to worry about any of this stuff. Your biggest concern if you're live streaming is going to be this window. And here you can see it's got a lot of presets already. YouTube is very common. Uh, 
Facebook, very common. Twitter, very common. Restream is a separate piece of, um, a separate app that you can use online that lets you stream to multiple places at once. Very useful um, if you're doing a lot of streaming. But Twitch, and of course, you can set up a custom um, custom uh, live stream setup too. You could just look at wherever you're streaming and it will tell you. Um, so you can see they have a whole lot in there. We are going to mostly focus on Facebook Live right now. It's easy. So you're going to select that and then we need to go to Facebook. Dum -dum -dum. So to get here, I should have, you're going to go to your Facebook page or YouTube channel. It's all basically the same. And you're going to click live. <laughs> and you're going to come down here and look for the stream key. You're going to copy that because that's what OBS wants. And then like magic, you're going to delete the old one, put in the new one. You may want to check to make sure that they match up and hit OK. And when you hit, and this is kind of cool because you can actually see it, when you hit start streaming, see right here? The video is connecting. And now whatever you have here is streaming here. So let's um, let's do this. Or here, we'll just do browser, make that. Okay. So say I want to stream. Come on over here and check. And you can see. You can play it. You can see what your stream is looking like. You can unmute it see right here? so that you can hear it and check everything, make sure everything's working right. And then once you're all ready and all set up and you like it, you're going to come down and hit go live. And like I said, this is basically the same for YouTube or anywhere else that you're going to be streaming. Um, so if you choose to live stream, that's how you would go about doing it. And you can make a... Um, YouTube Kids account if you're doing educational content, no comments, less advertising, that sort of thing. And you can share your content out live that way and then just post the link maybe in your Google Classroom or onto a Wakelet or whatever you're using. Okay, so that's the basics of using OBS. This is a very simple, simple um, introduction. Uh, and from here, you can you can get a lot more complicated and do all kinds of pretty amazing things. All right. I hope that that was helpful to you. Um, I use OBS all the time now for my online um, stream classes for the library, for Kaleidoscope, for Family Maker Camp. I think it's really easy to use. It's free. It lets me you know, pull in all my different media sources into one place so that I can um, share them out very easily and live stream them or record them. So I hope that that's useful. Um, make sure you check out Kaleidoscope Enrichment. My email address is there if you want to stay in touch or if you have any other questions or need any kind of help, I'm here. Um, if you are interested in uh, the book, that is the big book of, oh, come on. <laughs> The Big Book of Maker Camp Projects is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, pretty much any place like that. It's got over 100 projects for your camp, and a lot of them work really well online. I know. Check out my YouTube channel. I've been doing a bunch of them there. Um, so you can definitely use those projects for online uh, camps. You can use them for STEM projects for your kids in your classes. Um, put it to good use. Uh, and like I said, my YouTube channel has all kinds of different content that I've been doing too. And you can actually see the progression of like my first little luminaries um, project that I did from the library up to what I'm doing now. And I think that OBS has made a really big difference in the quality of what I'm able to do. And it certainly makes it a lot less stressful for me, <laughs> which is the most important part. Um, hopefully I'll see you again today. Thank you so much for coming to Virtually Maker Fair. There are a ton of amazing things out there and I really appreciate you taking your time to spend some of your day with me. Um, I will be heading over to meet the host of Family Maker Camp in just a little bit. So that is um, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. And then a little later on today, I'm hosting a little panel, Remaking Camp in a Time of Pandemic. And that's 10.30 uh, a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Pacific. So those are some more um, 
fun presentations that I'll be doing today, and I hope that you'll join me then too. Stay safe, stay healthy, <laughs> keep making, and I guess I'll see you at the next Virtually Maker Fair. Take care.